Good morning. A supply chain looks like this. Raw materials at the top and on the way down all the way finally to the final buyer. And it's a fact of life on this earth that the real power is at the top, not at the bottom. Wars are fought up there. Ask any kid who plays a war strategy game on his computer or goes to a world history class and he'll be quick to remind us. Wars are not fought over bakeries or Nabisco, but wars will be fought over the best farmland. Two countries at war might try to bomb each other's oil refineries and put their own aircraft crews at risk, but they will send entire armies overland to take an oil field away. Because without the oil, the refineries don't matter. How many wars throughout history have been waged over water or fishing grounds? Nobody cares about companies who can make fishing nets or poles. If you've got the fish, you'll figure out better ways to catch the fish. The real wealth and the real power is at the top of these supply chains, and China is at the top of most of them. And when we hear experts talk derisively about these BRICS countries, Russia, Brazil, India, China, and all their new friends in South America and in Africa, these are the world's natural resources economies. And it simply means that we've forgotten where things really come from. We think gasoline comes from a pump at the gas station and that computers come from a store because that's how removed we are now from factories and refineries and mines. This all goes to explain why sanctions fail, why the sanctions against Russia have failed, and why the chip wars against China have failed. These are export curbs and restrictions we put on our companies that sell the most advanced semiconductor chips to Chinese companies like Huawei. And there are several reasons that the chip war is lost, and we pay lots of attention to two of these big reasons. First, China has lots of very smart people who are put to work right away to build all these chips themselves. The second problem is that China itself is a giant consumer and user of these advanced chips, and our own companies are strongly motivated to keep selling their chips to China if they want to stay in business. But another problem is that these chip bans involve moving up the supply chain instead of down. Before our companies can even make advanced electronics, first they need the raw materials to build them, and China and the other BRICS countries own those raw materials. Until last year, almost nobody had heard of gallium, but the people who knew what gallium was and how important it is, they knew that we had a big problem with gallium. China retaliated against the semiconductor trade restrictions by banning the sale of gallium, which is used to make gallium nitride and gallium nitride is critical in telecommunications. Most of the gallium in the world is in China. Our top officials knew how important gallium is in the manufacturing of semiconductors themselves. Gallium nitride has huge advantages in RF amplifiers, which means that access to gallium is vitally important to manufacturers of 5G equipment. This is one of Huawei's markets, and Huawei is a target of many of our semiconductor bans. The chip bans did temporarily set back Huawei in acquiring the most advanced chips, but the fact that China has most of the world's gallium means that Huawei will always have enormous advantages in telecom, especially if China just decides to keep it all for themselves. But it's not just that. This article goes into the science and the chemistry of the gallium, and not only is gallium nitride so important in telecommunications, American companies can't seem to figure out how Huawei got gallium nitride to work so well. Huawei's 5G equipment is much lighter than comparable products from Ericsson and Nokia, which gives Huawei even more advantages. Heavier equipment needs more systems to keep them cool. It means that the masts, the poles, need to be able to support the heavier systems. They need more workers and heavier equipment to install those and maintain them. And that drives up the cost even further. The United States has insisted for years that Huawei equipment be ripped out and replaced with non-Chinese built gear. But nobody wants to really do that because of all these problems. 
In fact, even the Pentagon asks for a waiver every year so they don't have to comply with our own laws to replace Huawei equipment in our most critical communication systems. Huawei is now a generation ahead of any of its rivals in 5G and in telecom. Huawei can get gallium and they know what to do with it and our own companies cannot and don't. Here are our own official reports and top think tanks weighing in. The White House and top Washington officials have known about this vulnerability in our own supply chains. If China is effective in banning the export of gallium, it would be very damaging to our own companies. This report from mid-2021 is a 250-page assessment of the supply chain issues facing the United States in the most critical materials, and gallium is mentioned 14 times. Gallium nitride is important in power management and distribution and in semiconductors. Later, the report mentions gallium's importance in 5G, autonomous vehicles, renewable energy, defense systems. Later, gallium is necessary for wafers, and those are all concentrated in China. And that poses problems for several key industries because of their dependence on China for the gallium. This report is from European supply chain analysts for metals and they put China's gallium production over 95% of the world total. And note that Huawei has over 2,000 patents for gallium. The worldwide supply of gallium is under Chinese control. The CSIS estimates for China's gallium supply is even higher at 98% for raw gallium. China's advantages in gallium are derivative of their advantages in aluminum production, which is where most of the gallium tends to be found. Here's a chart for global aluminum production that looks like a thousand others. China starts at zero 20 years ago, and they draw a vertical line and everyone else just stands still. Ugly as that chart is for aluminum, the one for gallium is worse. This is not gallium compared to the United States. This is gallium from China compared to the whole world. On a supply chain risk assessment for the United States, the gallium supply scores very high in disruption potential, which is the x-axis, and on economic vulnerability, the vertical axis. CSIS dug in, crunched the numbers, and concluded that a 30% supply disruption in gallium would result in a $602 billion economic hit to the U.S. economy. The effects would cascade through industrial production, including for production of key weapons and military systems. That's just 30% gallium supply disruption. So this assessment was from last August 2023. The White House report was from 2021. Both of them reached the same conclusions, that China's advantages in all these key materials that are so vital in electronics and in semiconductors and clean energy, they are basically insurmountable. Yet our governments went ahead anyway and banned the exports of some advanced chips and equipment up the supply chain. Did our own officials think that the Chinese industry leaders were unaware of their monopoly in gallium and would just keep selling it anyway? Or did they assume that nobody in China could do what I just did and do a Google search for gallium supply chain and not find these unclassified reports on page one of the results. Anyway, China retaliated by banning the exports of rare earth metals down supply chains. Washington and the EU say to China, we won't sell you any more bread. China says no problem, they won't sell us any more flour. They'll bake their own bread. This is Geelong Castle. It's a hotel actually in Guizhou. Be good.